There's so much young talent in the NBA. And every single season, it seems like it's a couple of young guys that just come out of nowhere or just simply exceed preseason expectation. So my breakout player of the year for the 2019-2020 season is Brooklyn Nets' own Karis LeVert. Now entering into his fourth season at just 25 years old, I think he's ready to take that next step and go ahead and propel himself into the NBA spotlight. But before the NBA season gets kicked off and we get too far into this thing, let's go ahead and take a little closer look at one of the names that I think you need to know that's going to become a household name, and that's the young Karis LeVert. Welcome back to Journey of a Baller Hall, the best talk show for basketball addicts. I'm your host, General Hannibal X. Now, in this journey, we're going to be breaking down Karis LeVert from the Brooklyn Nets. And I'm going to tell you why he's my breakout player of the year for the 2019-2020 season. Now, when it comes to breakout players, this is kind of how I kind of define that and kind of classify these young players. This is somebody who's 25 or under, somebody who's in their third, fourth, maybe even fifth season at the most, somebody who hasn't truly been an all-star before, they haven't averaged 20 points a game before, so this is somebody who is still up and coming, still hasn't truly blossomed to what he's going to be in the NBA. And I think Karis LeVert fits that role perfectly. Entering into, like I say, just his fourth season at 25 years old, Karis LeVert has that all-around game. He's a guy who reminds me of a young Paul George. That ability to be a two-way player that can defend the one through the three position. He's about 6'7 with a 7-foot wingspan. Like I said, he, he can guard some ones, twos, and some of the smaller threes, right? But one of the things that truly makes him special is not just his ability to defend, but it's his ability to attack in a multitude of ways on the offensive end. Listen, he's got a legitimate handle. For a 6'7 uh, forward, he's got a solid handle. And I think that allows him to be able to break down the defense and get into the paint. But one of the reasons why he's able to get into the paint is because you have to respect his jumper as he's got a silky smooth jumper from the outside. Now, he's got to continue to work on his efficiency as we've seen over the first three years of his career. But we saw in the playoffs just last year with his first appearance at going up against the Philadelphia 76ers how he became bona fide. Putting up 21 points a game, like 4.6 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, shooting 49% from the field, and 46% from, from 3. Those are solid numbers. If he's able to kind of replicate that small sample size over a long period of time, like an 82-game season, we're looking at one, a, a guy who could be big time in the NBA. And the talent is there. The talent, like I said, is there. Now, one of the things that I truly love about Karras, and one of the reasons why he kind of fits into that breakout player mold is that he didn't come in with a lot of hype. He didn't come in as one of these superstar young lottery uh, recruits that were coming in expected to do a lot. And so I think even though he played in Michigan, coming in kind of under the radar, he's a worker. He's a worker B. And those are some of the guys that turn into some of the best two-way players in the game. Guys like a Paul George, guys like Jimmy Butler or Kawhi Leonard. These are guys who came in under the radar, they work, 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 and they were able to be efficient on both ends as well as being effective. So when it comes to Karis LeVert and the Brooklyn Nets, when he was able to get to the playoffs last year, even coming off that, that tragic leg injury, he was able to come back and give them something that they needed, which was that second score to go along with D'Angelo Russell. Now that D'Angelo Russell is gone and they bring in Kyrie Irving, now we got to see, can Karis LeVert do that over the course of the season? As we know, Kevin Durant's out for the entire year, most likely. So now LeVert's going to be pushed into that position to be that 2-3, that wingman, to be able to be beside Kyrie Irving, to hold it down, to be able to, you got to score consistently. I think he can do that. I'm projecting that Karis LeVert's going to be able to come out there this year and put up 18 to 20 points a game per night, give you five rebounds, five assists, and I think he's going to raise his efficiency level from the, the low uh, 40s that he was in, even in shooting in the low 30s from the three. I think he's going to raise those numbers up. Now, granted, it probably won't be as consistent as his playoff numbers were last year, 49% from the field and 46% from three, but if he's able to get anywhere close to that, watch out. This guy right here is going to be a potential up-and-coming all-star. Listen, when you've got a guy like this, like I said, once again, 6'7 with a 7-foot wingspan, quick hands, quick feet, high basketball IQ, he loves to play defense. But it's his offense which I think is going to truly take his game and his, his name to that next level. He's got that handle. He's got a solid handle for his size, so he can get into the defense. He also has that silky smooth jumper where if you back up off him and give him too much space, he'll nail it without question. So his combination of being able to attack and not just attack and, and finish over guys, he's truly crafty around the basket to be able to finish around defenders that will be trying to block his shots. 
You saw last year in the playoffs. He went to the paint and put Joel Embiid on a poster. A guy who can do that against one of the best defensive big men in the game at that young age, that's impressive. That's impressive. And I think he's going to be able to have more moments like that this season. Listen, Kyrie Irving has gotten a bad rap as not being necessarily a great leader, whatever the case may be. And maybe there's some truth to that. You know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. I think this guy right here, Karis LeVert, I think he's perfect for Kyrie Irving as that number two. So you got to remember when Irving was in Boston and he was trying to lead that team with guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they came in with more hype. They came in with more expectation to be the guy. So when he, when they had some success without him and then he came in, it was like, well, it, was, it was kind of a battle of whose team was going to be, who's going to take the shots. That's not Karis LeVert. Like I said, he doesn't come in or did not come in with that type of hype around him. So he's just coming in to be a worker bee. He didn't have a problem playing second fiddle to D'Angelo Russell. And I don't see a problem that he'll play second fiddle to Kyrie Irving this year. Now, the real question is going to be this. With his all-around game, as I said, he can shoot it, he can attack, he can rebound, he can pass. He's a very underrated passer. If he, Because he has that attack and that score first mentality, when he gets in the paint, he's also a willing passer. So when he gets in there, if the defenses collapse on him, he's easy to make some, some really good passes. The question is going to be, when Kevin Durant comes back next year and the Brooklyn Nets have their two superstars in Irving and Durantula, how does Karis LeVert continue to develop? As we know, year three through five is typically when young players start to blossom. They start to truly uh, settle into who they're going to become in the league. That's when you see players take that step, that next step, and then they kind of level off to being what they're going to be. So this is year four for Karras. Now, granted, year three is where he had that injury and he kind of, you know, it kind of messed up his season. But like I so said, we saw when he came back in the playoffs how he was bona fide. So in the preseason so far this year, even against the Lakers, he absolutely torched the Lakers. So I think Karis LeVert in this season is going to get, like I say, be around the 18 to 20 point range. But I think next year is going to be that real true season to prove, can you be that third option on a championship team? I think he can. I think the Karis LeVert can be that. I think the Karis LeVert can be that third option on a championship team. And I think you're going to start to see that this year as he's going to start to become one of those up and coming potential all-stars. Specifically in the East, I think he's going to be a borderline all-star this year. Once again, I'm projecting 18, 20 points a game, five rebounds, five assists. As long as he stays healthy, I think he's going to be that number two option for Kyrie. It's going to propel the Nets back to the playoffs, and it's going to propel them to be a top five or six seed in the East without Kevin Durant. The question is, when Kevin Durant returns next year, can this team with Durant, Irving, and Karras, can they be a legitimate title contender? And with, in my mind, no question. No question. I think he's going to show that this year. What do you think? What do you think about Karis LeVert being the breakout player of the year in the 2019-2020 season? And if not him, who's your uh, breakout player of the year? Is it somebody like John Collins from Atlanta? Um, a Jamal Murray from the Denver Nuggets? Like, who would you select to be your breakout player of the year? Go down to the comment section below and let me know. As always, I appreciate you for taking a look at this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that like button. Also, tap that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the journey of a ballaholic.